Great Debaters Contest is brought to you by Safaricom M-Pesa. Thank you for tuning in to the Great Debaters Contest. We are in Eldoret region and I am Austin Nyombong. And I am Mariam Bishar. We have a wonderful debate between Tabagon High School and Kituro High School on whether devolution is a hindrance to national integration. The first proposal, you have three minutes to blow our minds. Devolution is the distribution of power from the national, gov from the national government to the devolved units. National integration is uh, basically national unity. In 2010, when the constitution was being drafted, chapter 11 of the constitution was set aside for the devolution of government, and its main objectives was to foster, foster national unity and by recognizing diversities, ensure there was equitable distribution of resources. But is this really happening? I'll let you decide. A county like Nairobi was allocated 9.9 .9 billion in the 2013-2014 distribution of resources to all counties. A county like Turkana was, was awarded like 7.6 billion. Is this really fair? Judging from the way Turkana is, Look at Nairobi, it's already developed, but Turkana, no, not yet. But then you see the amount of money Turkana is given is less than a metropolitan like Nairobi. Which one needs more money? You decide. On matters of employment, the constitution states that in all employments, one third must be a, to balance the gender. Then all people, people with disabilities and the youth should be considered. Is this really happening? Let's look at the way people perform their duties. People from these counties right now, the way people are allocated, duties are allocated is according to who do you know, not according to order of merit. This has increased the, this has increased the imbalance of skills and skew, leading to the skill development. People are not working together. Ethnicity. Kwame Nkrumah, a leader from Ghana, almost lost his seat because of his ethnic background. He was from the minority group in Ghana. The majority did not want him to take his seat. So what did they do? They began revolting. This has also happened in Kenya. I wonder if it's right. So if we devolve these governments, people will be secluded. They will feel they're not part of this country. We should unite together, to fight together and foster together to ensure we are together as one. Kenya in itself is a diverse, of, full of diversities from the races to the culture, the tribe. We should be together, not apart. Devolving this government will keep people together, will not put people together, it will separate them, let them live together, which is not fair. A wise man once said that the true value of wealth is not in its lavish expenditure, but in its wise application. This is not relevant to our country. Everyone wants what's best for them. We've seen during this devolved government, cases of corruption have increased to a very high level, which is not fair. We should try and set parameters to do what we can, which is best. I would also like to conclude by saying, wise people want learn when they can, but only fools learn when they must. Before you was Alvin Motisha from Kichura High School. Moses, you have three minutes for your opening statements. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here a very disappointed person as my colleagues and I oppose the debatable issue devolution is a hindrance to national integration. Devolution refers to the transfer of powers and resources from the central authorities to the regional authorities. Hindrance is a factor that makes it difficult for something to happen. And on the other hand, national integration refers to the togetherness or oneness of a nation. The evolution in the case of Kenya is stated in chapter 11 of the Constitution, and my colleagues and I are here to show cause that devolution is the best thing that has ever happened to Kenya, and in the process, prove the stated motion wrong. For your information, devolution is a success story in a whooping 32 countries worldwide. I am Angela Tavasi from Tabagon Girls. To my first point, devolution has brought about equitable distribution of resources in the country, especially to those regions that have been marginalized for, for decades. In, a case study shows that 
For over 14 counties in the country have been marginalized, including that is including Wajia, Marsabit, Marsabit and Turkana. And if you see the, the people that come from these counties, some of them are not even aware that they are in Kenya. Some of them, you find that when a person is going to a town like Eldoret, you will find the person saying that, I'm going to Kenya. They are not even aware that Eldoret is just a town which is in Kenya. So when the, the people living in these marginalized, ma marginalized areas feel that they are, they are left out, and hence they resent, and this leads to development of a uh, feeling of jealousy towards the dominant towards the dominant communities, which leads to national dis disintegration. Those marginalized counties have now, re have, they have now re received their development, and when there is presence of development, there is less resentment, and this means, this means that the, 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 the jealousy that was once felt will die a natural death, and the people will start developing a sense of togetherness once, once again. Apart from that, devolution can, and it has actually brought an end to the secession, secessionist movement across the country. Take, for instance, in the case of Sri Lanka, when the, when the government of Sri Lanka refused to give in to the demands of the people for a, refused to give in to the demands of the people for a devolved government, the, Tam the, Tam the Tamil community rebelled, hence causing the death of over 80,000 people and also causing the internal displacement of over a million people. This was a very clear scenario of na national disintegration. But then, when, the, when in 2009 the government decided to introduce devolution, there was introduction of peace and hence development, which led to a very great national integration. The number of rebuttals proposes you have three minutes. Peace, love and unity is better than this master called devolution. I'm Beverly Kimuge from Kitura High School. I wonder how a person can say that there is equitable distribution of resources. Take for example, Nairobi and Turkana. Tur Nairobi is more devolved, devolved compared to, to Turkana. This is because you get to know that Nairobi has been given more, more money compared to Turkana, yet Turkana needs to still develop. A person can also say that marginalized areas, what about these marginalized areas? Not everybody, for example, a county like Baringo, Baringo County, it's a, it's a big county, yes, but not everybody has managed to be given equal, equal, equal distribution according to the marginalized areas. Yet there are other places which are developed compared to the rest. Yet a person can still say that devolution has not brought hindrance to national unity. What about the act of jealousy? Yes, there's jealousy. A point, uh, let's take, for example, the case of 2007. We had we had some post-election violence, yet there's still jealousy and mistrust, even though there's still this devolved government. I'd like to say that this devolved government has brought a lot of question marks into our heads. How comes a, a, nation, a county can, man, can manage to have good qualified personnel compared to the rest? Let's take, for example, Nyanza and Western. You get to know that Nyanza and Western have more qualified personnel compared to, compared to counties like the Eastern. They take, for example, doctors. We get, to, we get to know that there are more qualified doctors in Nyanza and Western compared to Tur Turkana and Eastern parts of the world, of the country, sorry. The government has increased the number of job opportunities so as to reduce the number of people who want the same job. Using this devolved government, it has also brought this issue about people not getting job opportunities yet they're in other counties. This is because a person will, consider, it, uh, will consider a person from their own ethnic groups compared to people from the, from the, from the not considering the qualification or the, the qualifications of that person, even though they have the, the techniques and everything that it takes to gain that job. Kenyans are too participating when it comes to dealing with corruption cases. This is because we get to know that 
they are ready to report and give testimonies for works concerning such cases. Yet, yet when the devolution is taking place, these people are not doing anything. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes for a rebuttal as well. Oh God, this is unbelievable. Seriously, Kenya is currently benefiting from devolution and still there are people who think that devolution is not helping Kenya. First, I want to tell you something about me. I love Kenya and I'm Claire Lagat. I'm proud that we have devolution and because of devolution, just as we've been told, a person from Northeastern says I'm going to Eldoret, not to Kenya. So what do we have? It means that they feel this equitable distribution. They see that they have development just as much as other places. Yes, maybe Nairobi is developed. This is because several years before, we had the national government ruling. But now, there's equitable. So it means maybe Nairobi is more developed than Turkana, but with time, Turkana will be coming up. It's better to go slow, but you're heading somewhere than to go so fast, and at the end of it, you see you're going nowhere. If there was corruption, how would the Turkana people say that you belong to Kenya? I want to tell you that before there was corruption, but now there's no corruption. Simply, be, there's early times, somebody from Northeastern had seen, there are people who said they have never seen a tarmac road. But due to devolution, the there are tarmac roads. In Northeastern, there was once a time that a tarmac road measured only 20 kilometers. But now, thanks to devolution, governors are seriously improving their counties as they want to be the best. And this creates sharing of ideas by governors and other, senior, and other people who will, who will aid in building Kenya and making Kenya a better place to be. I have something else to tell you about devolution. It has also it also brought a halt to secessionist movement. Other than Sri Lanka, the Quebec province of Canada, in 1950s they demanded for a devolved government, but because the because the country decided not to listen to them, they wanted to be an independent state. But since devolution, there has been there has been great unity in Canada. First, this French-speaking community of Canada in Quebec province have amazing culture and they've been sharing over the country and that has brought unity. So we should not think of devolution as something to destroy us but to make us a better country and make Kenya a better world to be. Another thing is that devolution has obviously created job opportunities. Now we have women reps, we have everything and in the county governments there is there are a lot of offices that need occupants. And if there, was no, there were no people, we would find graduated medical doctors working with papers but having no jobs. But now, each county is improving, thus they have jobs. So we should thank devolution. And another thing about devolution, due to these job, job opportunities, youth, are now, youth now have jobs that would have, if they didn't have these jobs, even politicians would have used them, used them to create havoc. But thanks to devolution, there are no tribal fights like 2007 and 2008 where we lost many Kenyans due to tribal, tribalism caused by evil leaders. So we should thank devolution and imagine Kenya like USA three years to come. Thank you. Take part in the M challenge by sending your short song, rap, or poem about Safaricom M Pesa on WhatsApp, and you could win 1,000 shillings in Safaricom airtime. Proposals have been asked, what proof do they have that Western Nyanza regions produce more qualified personnel? And of course, the opposers have been asked, do they have proof that since the onset of devolution, marginalized areas such as Wajir have improved? <laughs> we'll let them respond to the questions. Proposal number three, you have three minutes. If we don't have peace, we don't have unity, love, will this 
plan that we call devolution succeed? No, it will not succeed if there is no peace, love, and unity. So I want to urge you that this devolution should be scrapped off and we should maintain national integration. I am Kipchumba Linet from Kitura High School. I'll first start by answering the question posed. The question is about what proof do we have that Western and Nyanza pro produces good professionals than, than other counties? I want to start that, I want to first say that if you look at these counties, Western and Nyanza, you see that in Western and Nyanza, they, they have good systems of education. Take for instance, most of the medical practitioners, th those good educationists, they come from Nyanza. Take for instance, the PLO Lumumba, he comes from, he comes from Nyanza. He's, he's, very, he's very educated, very good. And take for instance, counties like the Northeastern and counties, counties in the, found in, like the Turkana County, they, don't, they do not have good systems of education. And most of them, they have, the professionals are not that many in those counties. So you find that in this, these counties, the, the Western and the Nyazan counties, they have good professionals. These people can do well and they can rebuttal it well. Thank you. Opposition, you have three minutes to respond as well. Really, we've seen that since this devolution was introduced, Wajia have now improved infrastructure and also education. We no longer hear them saying that they want independence. We see them studying in class and also they can travel very well. Okay, to my point is this, devolution prevents overwhelming of smaller tribes by larger tribes. A good example is El Molo, a small group found in Turkana. We see now they are recognized by the county government, they have equal share as the other tribes. They can have their leaders to represent them in their county assemblies. Also, devolution has brought about the, the people from other regions, they can now be heard. Like Kilif, in Kilifi there is Giriyama. Giriyama really like their culture. And we see when it was in the national sector, they could not really practice their culture like now. We see them welcoming us to go and see their culture. We go there, we interact, we bring new, thing, new ideas to our counties. We, we unite together with other tribes that had been left behind by the national government. We are really moving forward with this devolution. Let us not stop saying that devolution is taking us behind. Also, devolution has brought about timely and efficiently delivery of services. Uh, like, for example, in your county, you wanted something. It is easy now to get what you want than when before it was in the national, national administration. It could take years for you to get something. But now, your demands are hard because your representatives, a person like a governor, represents you and you are, you are getting your requirements as faster than before. Us, this brings national unity because we see that when things are, you are what you're demanded, you get in, on time than when it was the other time where you could take some time. We, when we, are, we ask for, even the governors, ask, when they tell us something, we really know that we will help them because they are here to support us and cater for our requirements. Really, devolution is something to embrace. And as, as you all know that, devolution is the backbone of our constitution, and we voted this in. Me, I'm really happy because my wishes has been fulfilled. I've always wanted to have a devolved government, and this is what I wanted. I'm really, I'm really proud to be a Kenyan because all our wishes, we, f we voted in for this constitution and we should really embrace devolution because it is part of us. Remember, keep it in your mind that devolution is the backbone of our constitution. Thank you. We'll now hear closing arguments. Proposers, you have a minute. Let's say you take, for example, you have three cows. Put them all at different homesteads. One after the other will die. That is exactly what you are doing to our country. 
We are devolving this thing. We are destroying the setup that we began with. Take, take those three cows, put them together. They will survive together. Everything biological depends on each other. They depend on each other for survival. I depend on you, you depend on me. Let's, if we live separately, I will grow, develop, I grow on my own. You grow on your own. We will not help each other. Something I have is something you lack. Something you lack is something I have. Why do you want to live like that? We are not cannibals. We are human beings. We are not tigers. We depend on each other. We will not live separately. If we devolve this government, where are we heading to? We are busy crying for unity and peace, yet we are busy destroying ourselves. So please consider this. Join me in. Let's unite together. Let us begin with what we began with. Uhuru. That is what we fought for. That is what our people lost blood for, not devolution. Thank you. Opposition, you also have a minute for your final submission. Once again, I'll remind you about Sri Lanka. They, they have undergone a great development. And their president himself said that without peace, there's no development. And without development, there's no peace. Because Kenya is developing after devolution was introduced, we are getting more peace, meaning we have national integration. We may have a few problems here and there, but we should remember that there is no problem without a solution. So let's figure out how to make devolution work based in our country, just like the other 32 countries, and with time we'll become among the first world countries. I want to tell you a quote. It's part of a song by Kelly Lama. It says, when you make, don't you panic when we make mistakes the most. One day it will make you grow. So why should we worry about the problems? Yet you know that we have the future to correct the mistakes. So let us w work with devolution and let's see how far it takes us, just as far as it has, it has taken us. Thank you and I'm Claire Lagarde. Kituro High, there was a lot of hearsay beginning with Alvin. In fact, I just indicated what you're presenting to us is hearsay, what people can speak outside or along the streets. Tabagon girls, I credit Angela as a first speaker. You did very well in your introduction. You made references to certain counties. You said over, four, over 14 counties are marginalized. To the two teams, on a scale of one to 10, it will be below five. It is not average, it is slightly below average. We need to up our games. Kituro High School, the judges awarded you 49%. Uh, give them a hand. <laughs> Tabagon High School, the judges award you 65%. So from all of us here at the Great Debaters Contest, I'm Austin Nyumbok. And I am Mariam Bishar. Remember to follow us on Twitter at Great Debaters EA. And of course, we thank Safaricom and PESA and KBC Channel One. See you next time. Contest was brought to you by Safaricom Mpesa.